Hey guys, it's UBHD here, and welcome back to Codebreakers. We're doing Breath of the Wild hacking this time. Going into this project, I had no idea just how big the modding community was for this, because my god, there was a lot to look at. But I managed to find a total of 30 mods that either make the game more enjoyable, add an interesting mechanic, or just plain trash. I think there's a little something for everyone here, so let's get into it. Kicking it off with my personal favorite skin mod, the Goose from Untitled Goose Game. This brand new model shrinks down Link into the chaos causing boy we all know and love. I was even able to find another mod that replaces the horse whistle for honking. Messing with enemies has never been better. I find it a lot more enjoyable to just sneak around and annoy them like you would in his game. There are some glitchy animations you can get while climbing and gliding as they're trying to stretch the model to its full size, which creates a whole lot of this. But other than that, they did a really good job so the sword and bow look totally normal. The only real downside I can see to this is it's hard to take the game seriously anymore when you're running around Hyrule as a goose, but it does allow you to laugh off a lot of your mistakes. Next up is minor but still a neat addition. This mod replaces the moon in the game to the one from Majora's Mask. That's right, the one that haunted you during your adventures in Termina is back. Luckily, this one doesn't destroy the world or anything, it's simply a model replacement to add a little nostalgia. It's textured really well, so if you enjoy smaller mods that don't change a whole lot, this is a good one for you. Normally, Gerudo Town is a very strict place that only allows women inside the gates. If you try to enter without the proper clothing, you'll get kicked out immediately. However, this mod allows Link to enter into the town regardless of what he's wearing. The only condition is that you must have defeated the divine beast, Va Naboris. So once you do that, you can wear whatever clothing you want or none at all and walk right through the front gate. This actually doesn't change any of the dialogue as the NPCs inside the town just assume you're wearing the proper clothing. Like here, she says she likes the Gerudo top. You still mustn't let anyone discover that you're actually a Vo. <laughs> yeah, about that. I think this mod is a great addition to the game, and a feature that I kinda expected to be in the base game anyway. I figured after you defeated the Divine Beast and saved the town, they'd let you show your true form, but I guess not. Thankfully, this mod allows me to have my expectation come to life. If you've played Breath of the Wild before, I'm positive you've experienced the pain of climbing in the rain. <coughs> You know, where you basically can't climb anything at all, and slipping makes you lose any progress you had. Well thankfully, this mod corrects this garbage mechanic, and now you won't slip at all. You're now free to climb up mountains or walls, whenever you want and wherever you want. The only thing I noticed, and the creator even mentioned himself, is that you do slightly slip after jumping. This isn't really too big a deal as it's a very small amount and a lot less than you normally would during playthroughs. For me, this is a very welcome quality of life improvement and hopefully catches the eye of some players. So, uh, yeah, as you can clearly see, people have managed to get Shrek into Breath of the Wild. This replaces the Hinox model in the game and is done pretty well. Facing off against Shrek is a lot more terrifying than the regular enemy in my opinion. Just look how menacing he is, ripping this tree out of the ground and chasing Link around with it. When you first arrive on the scene, he's slumped over like a normal Hinox would, so you're able to get on top of him, steal the weapons on his necklace, or whatever else you do while on top of a sleeping Shrek. Once you do defeat him, he darkens up and falls to the ground. You can now collect his toenails and whatever else he drops. You can find Shrek in the same locations you normally find the Hinox, so there's a whole bunch of Shreks to slay. And this mod is a good segue into the section of mods I'd like to call Hot Garbage. Ever wanted to surf down a mountain and slay enemies as Pickle Rick? Probably not, but this mod changes Link out for Pickle Rick. This is pretty self-explanatory, but a neat side effect I found came from putting on armor. To see Pickle Rick in action, you need to take all your clothes off, but putting some allows you to see what he'd look like if a pickle had legs. Super cool, I know. But also, if you put a shirt on, you'll just be a floating torso. Or a Link with no head. Whichever way you choose to use this mod is up to you, and either one makes for some funny shots. Continuing on with the trash, this mod replaces the giant horses with Thomas the Tank Engine. Why you ask? I have no idea. I'm not really sure how, but the creator pulled off this mod very nicely. It luckily only replaces the giant ones, so you're not going to see a herd of trains frolicking in Hyrule Field. I was kind of scared to get on him at first, but it functions as well as I expected. I never thought I'd be flipping off Thomas the Tank Engine to shoot a Guardian midair, but here we are I guess. Are you tired of the normal voice line when your abilities are ready? Well here's one for Virali's Gale. Normally he'll hit you with this boring sound. Virali's Gale is now ready. But now, whenever your ability comes back, your ears will be graced with this. There's actually a whole bunch of trash sound effects you can throw into this game, so let's take a look at some more. When starting off the game after picking your save file, instead of the soothing jingle, you'll get to hear this every time instead. Ooh, Mario's Tunnel of a Doom. 
Very scary. Yes, it's supposed to sound that bad on purpose, according to the creator. Do you want to add a little humor to the terrifying guardian lasers? How about slapping in the my eyes cry from Spongebob every time one flies toward you? It can be kind of hard to hear sometimes, but if you manage to get one to soar past you, it's funny hearing it go in one ear and out the other. It helps add a little humor to your situation as your life might be on the line. I don't know why, but this sound mod is definitely one of my favorites. Maybe because my sense of humor is as complex as a rock, but this one adds a little something when you enter bullet time. Jason Derulo, please don't copyright claim this. Yeah, so this adds in the slowed What You Say song when in slow-mo. I'm not joking when I say I messed around with this for a solid 15 minutes just because I was so entertained. I wish I could include a bunch of clips from this, but I don't want Jason to come knocking at my door, so just take my word for it. Think Link does too much walking? Well now he's strapped into a wheelchair. Now you can roll around Hyrule and still manage to pull off some pretty sick jumps. Fighting enemies looks pretty neat, especially when you enter bullet time. You can even grind down mountains in style when you shield surf. While this mod is a joke, it's actually done really well. The hands line up when standing still, and walking around actually makes it look like he's pushing himself. Is the Master Sword just not good enough for you? Why not turn it into the Master Baguette? Now you can take down enemies with this beautiful piece of French weaponry. Just look at the way it glows. Filled with the souls of all of its victims, scaring off any potential rivals. <coughs> anyway, yes, now you too can finally fulfill your dreams of slapping a Bacoblin across the face with this long, narrow, surprisingly firm piece of formulated dough and knees combo. Assume- <laughs> Assuming you were able to even pull it out of the pedestal, that is. Up next was supposed to be a Mario mod, but as you can see, it's not really working like I expected. The files are a little too outdated and don't work with the current updates. But you know, it still works in spirit. You still got the model shape right, but the textures are just not there. This is what it's supposed to look like, and it even replaces the boomerang with a Cappy model. This would have been a pretty neat mod to show off, especially with a certain level mod we have coming up. What's a mod showcase without having bub Battlefield ported over into another game? This replaces the Job Beige Shrine? Job Beige Shrine? Job Beige Shrine? I don't know how to pronounce it, but you get the idea. Now when you enter, you're placed into bub Battlefield. It's kind of a funny cutscene, because you walk off the podium and then drop down to the mountain before you even take control of Link. But anyway, it's pretty well done. All the key geography is here, like the ramp, mountain, and cannon hole. <laughs> <laughs> But whatever you do, don't fall into them or you'll be stuck down here and have to warp out or die. The map is missing a few things here and there, such as the plank to cross to the area over here, but I'm sure that would have been hard to implement. There's not too much to do in here as the creator himself even said it was just a test. You can see the original shrine up in the sky with most of the walls missing. So obviously, I wouldn't recommend using this mod until you've actually completed the shrine. Other than that though, it's fun to explore and run around a little bit. It would have looked even better if Mario didn't look like this, so I put some clothes on him to make him look like less of an eyesore. The side quest to build Link's house is very cool on its own, but what if you could make it even better? Well as you can see, there's a mod that does exactly that. Starting off with the outside, there's a couple of neat statues added including one of Zelda and two motorcycles. One is the Master Cycle and the other one is from Mario Kart 8. Moving on to the inside, this is where the mod really starts to shine. We got a complete revamp of the house, along with a bunch of new features. A fully functional ancient oven is here for all of your ancient armor and weapon needs. We got a couch with a cooking pot fireplace that works, and a knight statue with a sword that you can actually pick up. You also get more display cases which is really nice since I felt the original did not have enough. There's a lot of decorations too, such as more framed pictures, and this mounted lionel head over the door. This mod really improves Link's house and makes it a lot more enjoyable to visit. At the same time, it makes me wish this was in the base game to begin with, but it's still a cool side quest nonetheless and this just makes it that much more worth it to complete. Moving on to a really, really useful mod, having a guardian beam built into the master sword. Normally, you're able to shoot a beam if you go to throw the weapon. You also need to have full HP or it won't fire anything at all. But now when you go to use the beam with any amount of HP, it'll send out the same beam a guardian fires. This obviously does a lot more damage and causes a lot more chaos, like an explosion and setting things on fire. Be careful though, because with all that power means you can just damage yourself a lot as well. 
The targeting can be a little finicky as expected, so make sure you have a clear and open shot before letting this thing go. Or else it'll look something like this. The beam's physics itself can be a little off at times, mainly due to the fact that it's never supposed to be used like this. So you might have some beams that go right through enemies or randomly blow up in your face for no reason. With that being said, I'm not trying to make this sound like a bad mod. In fact, it's the complete opposite. I was easily able to go into enemy areas and wipe everything out clean completely unscathed. It feels so good sometimes to just completely obliterate enemies without having to do any work at all. Of course, I also wanted to know how they were against the Guardians themselves. I'm proud to announce it works really well. It flips them onto their backs and allows you to take them out with ease. It's satisfying giving them a taste of their own medicine. You can also use it for practical things like creating airstreams to glide on and lighting fires. But of course, the main focus of this is to have the power of a guardian beam in your back pocket. This also doesn't wear down the master sword at all. For my testing, I was able to use it hundreds of times with no damage warning or anything. Are you tired of actually fighting enemies? Well, thanks to this mod, you don't have to anymore. It is called Oblivious Enemies and makes you invisible to almost all of them. When you walk up to them, they won't notice you at all. They can still see things you do like placing items down or shooting arrows, but they'll never spot you fully. This gives you total control over how you play the game. Even if you do hit them, they won't do anything in response. This basically takes the effect from Majora's Mask and amplifies it a lot. Even a majority of the bosses like Hinox. They'll wake up after you hit them, but they still won't find you and go back to sleep. Lionels are a little different story. It didn't see me at first, but upon mounting and hurting it, they noticed me and began to slap me up. With that being said, this mod just makes you invisible to enemies so they can't spot you. However, certain ones that trigger to spawn and ready to attack Link, such as Choo Choo's, will not be affected by this and can still hurt you. Even the Yiga clan still attacks when you trigger them to spawn in. Any boss in a shrine or dungeon still sees you as well, so don't go into the Ganon fight unprepared or anything. With that being said, it's still a really fun mod to mess around with and interact with a majority of the enemies in a new and entertaining way. In Breath of the Wild, you're able to get a motorcycle through DLC. While that's great and all, why not get a car? This mod adds the initial D car for Link to drive around in. It's modeled fairly well and even lines up the steering wheel to Link's hands. It can be a little buggy when performing sharp turns as it's still based on leaning in a motorcycle. But if anything, it just adds to the experience. You can still do anything you normally do, but this just spices up driving around or off of mountains. So use this one if you want to add a full car to the game, and a cool one at that. Up next is a great character mod. They managed to add Samus into the game and add a whole bunch of features. Starting off, we have the famous power suit in place of the ancient armor. This is my personal favorite as it just looks sick in game. Next up we have her zero suit in place of the wild set. Also very neat. But that's not all. There are two custom sets of clothes with the Hylian set being one of them. It slightly changes the clothes in order to fit the girl's look. It does the same thing with the worn set too, altering the look for a female. There's also this look if you take off all the armor, but I won't be showcasing this one for that long for obvious reasons. Anyway, there's still more to look at than just cosmetic changes. The glider has changed as well to have Samus holding the baby from Metroid. Now you can float around Hyrule with a completely different look. This mod even adds more immersion by adding custom sound effects in place of Link's. Have a listen. One final detail they added was the ability to dye the clothes and change up the outfits even further. I chose to get the default, but just the option to change this is great. That's basically it for this one though. I gotta give them props for the amount of detail and care they added to this one. Even if you aren't using one of the four armor sets they updated, putting on any other articles looks great as well. So whether you're planning on doing a whole playthrough as Samus or just roaming around Hyrule, I'd highly recommend this one. Moving over to a little segment of enemy mobs. There are a good amount of crossovers from other Nintendo games. There are a few I want to highlight so I'll be going over them a little quicker. Up first is replacing the normal Talus with a Thwomp. When you stumble across one, they'll be laying down like normal until you disturb them. This model fits the enemy pretty well, the only thing is the collision can be wonky sometimes as it still keeps the same regular Talus. But you're still able to climb up and attack its weak spot until you take it out. Moving on to Mo-Eyes from Super Mario Odyssey replacing Peblets. It's funny to see a herd of these guys walking around. They behave the same way and still need something such as a bomb to defeat. These enemies are pretty uncommon so why not spice it up when you do come across one. This next one switches out Stacoblin with Dry Bones, and I think this one is the best considering they're both made out of bones, and after attacking them they fall apart and try and mend themselves back together. It's fun to mess with these guys and chuck their head around, so why not do it with the Dry Bones instead. Sticking with the Mario theme, we got Paragoombas instead of Kisis. These are normally the bats in the game, so it's pretty refreshing seeing a bunch of them flying around in herds. 
or colonies, if you will. And finally, Charizard's replacing Lizalfos. Again, a really good mod as they can breathe fire and they behave similar to Charizard already. The model is very well done and they look pretty neat when they're trying to camouflage in too. But that's not all, as you probably know, Lizalfos have different elemental variations. This also means Charizards do too. The ice ones are colored blue, while the electric ones are a tan-like color and have electricity running through them. I really like this touch as the colors look really cool in game and also makes it easy to tell which is which. This next mod gives you a peek into what goes on behind the scenes of the game. It's titled No Loading Screen and does exactly that. Anytime there's supposed to be a loading screen, it gets removed so we can see what's happening while we're supposed to be sitting through them. Starting off with the title screen, we get to see the world load in with some interesting glitches at first, then Link T posing, and finally the camera correcting itself and the HUD coming in. Now on to warping. The current area gets unloaded in chunks, Link actually gets spawned in and then gets taken out for the warp animation, and the camera comes back to where we normally see the cutscene begin. Another load zone I wanted to try out was sleeping. Spoiler alert, Link doesn't actually lay down or anything. He just sits there while parts of the world despawn, the lighting snaps to the desired time, and then things finally begin to reload as we come back into what we normally see. The last area I wanted to experiment with was the beginning of the game. During the opening cutscene, this mod removes the black background you normally see while it's playing out, so you just see an unloaded world. Once the Shrine of Resurrection comes into view, you see Link in a T-pose before dropping into the bottom of this tub thing. It's a very strange sight, but after that, the rest plays out pretty normally. Overall, this isn't a very useful mod, but one I really enjoyed messing around with to see what's happening in the background of these loading screens. Kinda like peeling back the curtain. This is a main one I thought of when wanting to mod this game. It's a quality of life one titled Nature Man. It has a bunch of useful features. Starting off, we have a 30% faster running speed. I think it also makes Link walk around faster as well, but the creator didn't mention that. We also got a 40% faster climbing speed so you can reach new heights. A 50% faster swimming speed, which is really nice. It's also worth noting that none of these eat up your stamina any quicker, so feel free to travel around Hyrule even faster. Along with these buffs, you might be able to see the temperature meter at the bottom is basically gone now, allowing you to resist cold as well as heat. So climb those snowy mountains or desert terrain in whatever clothes you want. While we're in these areas, this mod also negates the movement penalty for running through sand or snow, so now Link will behave like he's just running on normal ground. Another feature is maximum quietness no matter what you're wearing, so you're able to sneak around without having enemies hear you as often. One final thing it does is make you lightning proof. So yeah, slap on all the metal equipment you got, cause Link won't be harmed by it at all. The only real elemental danger you can put yourself in now is still being flammable in areas like Death Mountain, as it's still too hot. I'm surprised the creator didn't include this one, but maybe it was too hard to add in or something. Now while these features are great, it's not meant to balance the game out at all. In fact, it removes a lot of the incentives like wearing certain clothing to get certain buffs, or cooking food to get stats you automatically get through this. This mod isn't for everyone as it simply makes the game easier in a lot of ways. Up next is... Um... Up next is Link from Wind Waker. If you wanted to play Breath of the Wild but wanted some nostalgia thrown in there, here you go. It replaces Link's model with the Toon Link from Wind Waker. I really like this one, and the height change is a nice touch. But as you saw in the beginning of this, adding armor makes this mod look hilarious. When I first booted up the game with this mod on, I still had armor equipped and it made Link look like this. I don't even know why this was so funny to me, but I just got such a kick out of it. Messing around with more clothes like Majora's Mask turned him into a very creepy looking demon. But in case that doesn't do it for you, slapping on this mask just fills his eyes completely black. I uh... I don't know about this. One final thing was the Lionel Mask, which gave Link a nice full beard and some horns to boot. I honestly really enjoyed this mod, but for the wrong reasons. Just take a look at the way he glides. While this is a really cool addition to add a different Link, putting on different armor was what made this mod shine for me. This next mod's honestly amazing. It replaces the Rusted Shield for a snowboard. It's a complete overhaul, as it's named the Hylian Snowboard and reads, A snowboard with a stylish look. Even though it's a snowboard, you can possibly use it anywhere you want. The graphics for it are really well put together, and it looks even better when you're actually using it to shred down the Hebra Mountains. I honestly had a ton of fun with this one, even though shield surfing was in the game already, it just makes it that much more enjoyable. This mod also makes it so you go a little faster with a reduced friction, and it makes it so the shield never breaks while riding it. Just don't use it in battle, or it will break since it is just a rusted shield. When I was still playing through this game for the first time, I was actually expecting to get some kind of snowboard or something to surf on that wouldn't break every 5 minutes. But thanks to this mod, my expectations became a reality again. So whether you're flying down snowy peaks or cruising along in the sand, 
This mod adds a little more enjoyment to it all. Well, <laughs> this next one was supposed to be a Revali character mod so you could play as him. But as you can see, it didn't turn out too well. You can see we got the body proportions correct, but all I have now is a stubby link with super long fingers. I still did get a kick out of terrorizing the townspeople and wearing different outfits, but sadly, no Revali, just slender link. Since that last champion mod didn't work out as well as I hoped, how about this one we get to play as Mifa? Yeah, that's right. Not only do we get a good looking player model, but we get a bunch of neat features too. Her swim speed is a lot faster and doesn't use up any stamina no matter how long we're in the water for. You're able to swim up waterfalls regardless of what armor you're wearing. And when you do pop out the top of it, why not take a look at the new glider we get to match with. On top of all this, we get the Ceremonial Trident, which is an indestructible light scale trident. This mod is really immersive and adds so much more to the game. And I figured I'd add it right after the Revali attempt to make it look that much better. In all seriousness though, they did an amazing job, and you should definitely check this one out if you want a completely new experience with Breath of the Wild. Coming up next, we got- Next up is a mod that gives you the glider as soon as you start the game. Nah, I'm just kidding. Of course with any new game, there's gotta be the fan favorite from Undertale. This is a character mod that replaces the Radiant Collection with Sans outfit. Not only that, we get a Gaster Blaster instead of the Agent Bow. Putting this whole look together looks really sick in game. The Sans model itself is very well done, so I gotta give credit where it's due. So if you haven't had enough Sans from other games, here you go. Next up is a mod that gives you the glider as soon as you start the game, and I mean right away. Even when you're in the Shrine of Resurrection, you can still glide around a little bit. But obviously the main point to this is leaving the Great Plateau early. Normally you need to do a bunch of shrines to learn the game, but if you've already played through the game or starting up a new master mode save, you clearly don't need this little tutorial. So with this glider, you're able to jump right off and continue the game. Well, kinda. If you just go right for the drop off, there will be no shrines or towers you can interact with. But all you gotta do is activate the Great Plateau Tower and then you're ready to roll. Like I said before, the main point of this is to skip the tutorial, I guess you could say, part of the game and hop straight into the action. So if this looks useful to you, give it a go. This is a really handy one for all of you video makers out there. It's titled the Silent Camera and No Dialogue Mod. So starting off, the camera ruin is massively improved and removes all the HUD to give you a crisp, clean shot of anything you want. You're able to walk around, pan the camera, and zoom in all you want to get those shots of this beautiful game. On top of that, it also removes any text boxes when speaking to NPCs, allowing you to substitute your own conversations if you so wish. This also removes your chance to understand anything of what they're actually saying, so only use this if you've beaten the game or something. Overall though, this is a really cool mod and allows you to take some scenic videos of Breath of the Wild. I'm personally not the best cinematographer, but I'm sure some of you are, and this mod is for you. So uh, yeah, that's all the mods I wanted to show off in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Whether you wanted to ride around on Thomas the Tank Engine as a goose fighting Shrek while holding a baguette, or looking for some actual useful ones, I hope there was at least one mod that caught your eye and maybe you want to try out for yourself. Of course, there are hundreds of mods for this game that I didn't shed any light on at all, but I think this video has gone on for long enough anyway. Speaking of which, this video likely would not have been possible without GameBanana.com. I wasn't sponsored or anything, but this is where I found all the mods to use for this episode, and it has a lot of really handy tools for either creating mods or getting them up and running. I'll leave links to everything I touched on throughout this journey in the description below. But I think that's everything, so with that, I'ma get up out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, see ya!